All right, looks like I'm streaming. I was streaming, but then uh, the library cut me off. I think I'm given like two hour limits on the website and then I get cut off. And I, I didn't even notice immediately when that uh, cut me off. So that, uh, that came as a surprise. I started explaining things and I guess it was all offline. So that's how this library works. They'll cut you off and yeah, you won't really know when that's gonna happen. All right, so uh, the decision, I, I was, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm back in Judge Owsley's court completely, uh, but I wasn't, I was out of his court partially for a little while while I was in Third Circuit. So for a while I was in the Third Circuit Court of Appeals fully, but only partially in Judge Owsley's jurisdiction um, during that time that, oh, that, uh, all right. During that time that uh, it was it was on appeal, and but now I'm not, not in the appeal uh, phase anymore and and the the prosecutor and judge like wasted no time within within just a couple of days they've they're requesting a trial and and then a requesting pre-trial so <laughs> yeah the wake up the judge <laughs> yeah so that's that's uh <clears throat> that's it's a back and forth phase uh with the screwed up court system of Louisiana. And, um, this, this is the, the, the current phase that's going on. All right. We have the, the original request by the prosecutor. All right. To, um, let's see. Hello. <clears throat> Let's say, by the by, the prosecutor who wants to uh, set the matter for trial. So, the the prosecutor says, now in the court comes the state of Louisiana through the first assistant, Cloyd Benjamin Jr., who moves this court to wit. Defendant Travis Hines filed a writ of review with the Third Circuit Court of Appeal on January 31st, 2023. The court vacated the previous conviction and sentence, granting a new trial for defendant. The state of Louisiana, pursuant to the Court of Appeals ruling, moves this court to set a date for a new trial. A uh, new trial, a uh, new trial, yeah. So he wants, he wants the new trial. I don't even know if that showed up on camera. A new trial. But Judge Owsley wasn't so keen on jumping on that. He made a. Uh, a response within a matter of days. I mean, we're talking quick, quick on the ball. They like, like they got nothing better to do. This is the only thing they're working on now. And, and they can easily, they got the spare time. They got a lot of spare time for this. Whoops. No, I'm trying to get back to, so we have, let's see if that's even readable. Okay, yeah, easily. Mover, 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 praise, praise the, pr put, clasps the hands together, mover, praise, and Judge Jossley will pray with the mover for the trial to be set. Pray hard, oh yeah, pray. Pray the trial to be set and the defendant be served and ordered to appear. Ordered to appear for trial. Okay. Order. Order to be 
order to uh, be be present for a trial. That's an order. All right. How else do you order order somebody to be to appear? All right. And and that's the thing. He's asking the the prosecutor asks for an order for me to show up to trial. Um, and uh, Judge Owsley doesn't quite um, follow through with this order. All right. All right, and there, here's the order. I certify that I've caused a copy of this motion to be served. And I took out the emails of my lawyer and uh, from Cloyd, too. Cloyd Ben Benjamin. Who wrote? I copied this exactly. I don't know. They, they spelt his name different. Is it an N? His first name is so weird. I wouldn't be surprised if his last name really is really a double N. Uh, foregoing considered is therefore ordered that this... Okay. And then he expected Judge Osley to say, foregoing considered this... It is therefore ordered that this matter be fixed on the trial docket <clears throat> and left it pretty blank. And this is actually kind of a weird copy. I got this on Google Docs. They've changed the wording a little bit. But uh, Judge Owsley goes, uh, writes his own order. All right. And he says... Pursuant to a ruling by the Third Circuit Court of Appeal on Defendant Travis Hines' writ of review, the court is hereby setting this matter for a pre-trial on the day of February at 8.30 a.m., thus ordered and signed on the 10th day of February. Okay. And I took out the emails. Um... Now, look at that. He's, he's uh, pretty much, he's not ordering, um, he, uh, it's, it's, I, I get the impression that my lawyer could just go in my place. Is that, is that what I am to think? Pursuant to the ruling is hereby setting this matter for a pretrial hearing. Do I have to be at all pretrial hearings? I'd just as soon not. It's it's like it's like 300 miles away from me. I mean, uh, and it's on short notice too. Look at that date. I have I have February, and it uh, the day of. Oh, that didn't go through. It's the seventh on the seventeenth, on the seventeenth. I guess I needed to do that. So seventeen. 17 February at 8.30 is early in the morning, short notice. I mean, we're talking like within a week, a very short time. So, uh, I mean, they rushed to, to uh, get their, to file their paperwork uh, to get me back into the, their process. And then they're trying to rush me back into the city. It's, it's, it's really, it's amazing how fast they want to move. And, and, and like they say, for people who, who work fast, work hard, work hard and fast, those type of people make a lot of mistakes. They think that, oh, and all the flurry of the confusion and the fast pace, uh, people will overlook all the mistakes that they make. Okay. So it's acceptable to work so fast. And then, and then have uh, have these mistakes. It's it's just you know you're you're just you're you're just take it you're just uh, you're blindsided left and right in the in the city court, and that's their strategy to blindside you. That's why they withhold evidence from you to the last minute. That's why they try to move fast on their on their paperwork. And I mean. It's also the other factor is that they just don't have anything better to do with themselves. 
This is this is their murder case in city court because his jurisdiction is so limited. He can't do a he can't do a single felony. There's not even like lesser felonies that he's allowed, and and I don't think a, a city judge should ever be allowed to hear a felony. Has there been ever been a case where a city judge has heard a felony case before? But for them to do misdemeanors is kind of rare too. It's not in every state. There's, a, I mean, there's there's a lot of city judges out there. Probably most city judges don't hear misdemeanor cases. All right, they're traffic court. But uh, in Louisiana, they've really given given them a lot of extra power. Uh, he's trying to get people to pay attention. Uh, okay, um, I'm just complaining about uh, this my situation. That's all. That's. There's people that uh, are, are interested in it. I mean, yeah, there's, I have a lot to say about it. Um, so, uh, let's see, this, this, uh, this now is, it's in place. It's not clear, Judge, Judge Owsley, it's not clear. All right, buddy, what, well, what, um, like, requirements I have to, to follow with this when I have a lawyer. All right, I'm, I'm thinking I have to go back, but it's very stressful. All right, they've already stressed, stressed me out for 2022. 20, 2022 has been a very stressful year, just like 2020 with Williston, going through with the Williston, and then and now uh, Natchitoches. They just, that's, that's uh, what, I mean, what these, these city judges do what the prosecutors do. Um, uh, but the, yeah, this this is the order. So I'm looking at uh, February 17th uh, showing up. And <clears throat> I'm thinking I, I would like to challenge the, the juris, challenge the jurisdiction from another state. Let's see, uh, window, window. All right, let's see if this, Oh, it does show up. Wow, look at that. So I got this this paperwork, and this was this was signed when I was in jail. I made jail actually made a copy of this appearance bond for me. All right, and uh, it's it's uh it's very loose on on uh on rules or requirements i i'm just not quite following like when how do i get it back they they certainly make it clear that if i fail in any way the city e takes it that's it but <laughs> they don't explain at all how i get it back and this is a bond this isn't a a down, this isn't a payment, this is a bond. All right, so I am the bondsman of my own bond, and this is an appeals bond, or they call it a parents bond. Some will call it a cash bond. Travis Hines is a principal, and Travis Hines is surety and bound and solid and, uh, and acknowledge ourselves to be indebted unto the city See, the city wants this money for sure. And the sum of 1500 for the faithful payment in which we bind ourselves. Uh, we have signed this on the third day of May. That was when I was released from jail. I had, I had my, my, my sham trial, my vacated trial on April 11th, 2022. And then I... I had 30 days to serve, but I got out four days sooner on the third day of May. Okay, let me just see. Uh, he ordered a pretrial, but where's the order to appear? There's no order to appear. That's the weird thing. It's it's like it's it's like a partial a partial order from Judge Osley, and it's not clear if there's no order to appear. I mean. We could conduct this pre-trial um, over the phone, all right? We don't have to show up. There's no, did it say order to appear? 
Did he, did he actually give an order to appear? See, he's not. he didn't say order to appear. This Setting this matter for a pretrial hearing, this is ordered and signed. That's it. There's nothing, there's nothing else, all right? So this is something that um, my lawyer could just call in, right? My lawyer could just call in. He doesn't have to show up. He just calls in on that date and time for uh, for a pre-trial hearing. We could do it over the phone. We could do it over Zoom. I'd really like to do it over Zoom, uh, but there's no order to appear. There's no. I have no no bonds. This this bond does not. Oh, and I didn't even show. All right. Well, whatever. This bond does not. Sh um, does not roll over because if this bond rolls over then my first bond should roll over should have rolled over to this so um that so there's no way yeah there's i have no bond right now but i have a charge against me it's just kind of an on your honor type of thing at this point right judge osley this is on your honor show up or i'll be really upset <clears throat> Right? So, uh, or maybe Judge Chelsea is so screwed up that he doesn't know what he's doing. Maybe, maybe he's not making the best decision on how this should work. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll need to maybe ask my, my lawyer what he thinks. Um, so this this is the bond. I, I, how do I get the bond back? That's I guess that's my main question here. How do I get that bond back? Because uh, it says I'm arrested for the resisting arrest. I've been admitted to to bail and the amount hereby undertake. The name principal appear at all stages. Okay, that's at all all stages of the proceedings in in the. Um, and during the appeal process of the proceedings in municipal court to answer that charge and will at all t times hold himself amenable to the orders and process and if convicted will appear for pronouncement of the verdict because otherwise if this rolls over then the first one maybe rolls back in maybe my first bond maybe my first bond rolls back in so I'll have two bonds on me, both for $1,500. So I have a $3,000 bond that's, that would, that's going on now, now that I'm back in Judge Elsley's court again. Is that, I mean, I don't, I don't fully understand. Appear for pronouncement of the verdict and sentence, and if the sentence includes an assessment of a fine, for time for payment, has been granted the principal will reappear on the date and time ordered for payments of the fine it will not leave the state without written per and i got written permission that was covered judge Elsley actually gave me permission to leave the state if he fails to perform any of these conditions we will okay if he fails to perform any of these conditions we or i will pay on to the city of natchitoches the aforementioned the aforesaid amount. So this uh, this bond is sitting there. Somebody's holding this. I believe I went down to the police station. They have this uh, this office for records. It's the the police station's records office. And I pay. I asked them how does the bond process work, and they say that we. We collect a fee of twenty dollars, and then we take the bond. So the bond was paid in cash to that records department at the Natchitoches Police Station. Let's see. Mailing okay. Mailing address of surety. Mailing address of principal. All right, uh, and and they're holding on to it. They got some kind of a trust. The police have a trust fund. And who is this guy? Who is PFCMI? 
private first class M M J. I can't even read the police officer's name. But there was a police officer, not even a judge, a police officer approved of my bond, okay? And I believe usually it's, I mean, they got police officer typed in there and then somebody wrote in a, a signature that's unreadable. And they do that a lot. I mean, look at what these, the, the appeals court did. They, they just put their initials. So you have to do some investigating to find out who they are. They make they make even their 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 uh, their signatures as as a uh, um uh, I don't know hard to decipher as possible. See Jessica Davis says good luck and gave two dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, when the judge retires, he gets 80% to 100% pension for dragging uh, appear at all stages. Yeah, all stages of that current situation. See, I got, I got another case number for this uh, appeal, okay? I have a case number at the city level. And I have a case number at the appeals court level. So there's two case numbers. So that's, that's uh, and I mean, so far I've had to deal with four judges in all, I, I guess you could say. Um, well, um, so they, they give just enough information in this bond. And this is the bottom. They give just enough information in this bond to threaten you, all right? To threaten you that you're gonna lose it if you don't follow uh, what they demand. But after you, they, they, don't, they don't explain uh, what you get after you do follow what they command, all right? For it to, com to reach completion. They, they don't go into any explanation. They just wanna, they just love to, to threaten and intimidate, and and then uh, when you're when you're an obedient obedient defendant and go through the process, they don't explain what you, what you got to do to get it back. So this this is a a situation I'm not familiar with. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't know. Is my appeals attorney willing to represent me? Um, I, I don't know, maybe have to really get a contract uh, drawn up and, and see where he stands on that. But uh, this, this, um, this situation is, it can, it can, uh, it's got a, I, I'm told it's got a lot of moving parts. My name isn't in all caps. Yeah, see, oh, but look at this. My principal arrestee, I have my name printed, all right? They make sure of that. They make sure that my name is printed. But uh, actually, well, no, the surety bondsman, they make sure that name is printed. But they don't, they don't print the police officer, all right? It's just a scribble. And you don't you don't see who that is, because uh, that's that's how this this legal system works. They really love to identify uh, the people that are accused. The accused, uh, the focus is to identify the accused as much as possible, but the accusers, they keep th their information as um, obscure as possible, right? Right, Judge Elsley. You don't need to know anybody's name. Everybody can be private who accuses, but if you're being accused, we need to know everything about you. We need to know every detail, every step you make, because it's our right to know. So it's really incredible how they, how they operate like that, and people let, it get, let them get away with that. I mean, who is my arresting officer? What am I going to do? If I'm like, okay, who is this guy? All right. 
who is this person? PFC mm, genetic chick. All right, who is that? I ask you, and and sure, I'll, I'll send. Well, pff, the, you know, if I the the police the police don't um, uh, respond to Facebook emails. <laughs> They don't respond to anything. They, were, I guess, they they got a highly they got a highly uh, motivated unit to to go out into the community and bust people for drugs and guns and all various crimes, arrest warrants. They got a highly motivated team uh, on their on their police squad to go out and and do and to respond to to all these arrest arrestable offenses. But uh, they can't. They can't answer um, anything that that causes them to have to uh, explain themselves or uh, identify themselves. It's like okay, um, they, yeah. Like if you go on their Facebook, you'll see that they talk about all the busts they've been getting with this highly motivated unit, like a, a, a SWAT team that uh, is running rampant through the community, uh, busting. Busting people in in aggressive ways. All right. If you ask who was who is on that team, they're not going to tell you. They got to keep they got to keep all that. But they'll certainly let you know all the people that they busted. They'll give you their names and and addresses and ages. You you get to learn all about the people they bust. But uh, who are these heroes? All right. Who is this hero? Who signed off on my bonds? All right, but uh, I I certainly get I get the privilege. Maybe it's I'm privileged to be identified. Maybe I should consider it a privilege that they they uh, they go the extra step to to make sure that there's no confusion about who I am uh, and and the, the person that's that's the arrestee. There's no confusion about that. They want to make sure. Not you know. I don't have to explain myself. I don't have to explain. Oh, I'm the arrestee. It's not this other person. I don't have to explain. But the cops, they're you know, they might pass this signature around and be like, "Is this yours? Is this yours? Is this, is this, is this yours? Is this yours? Yeah, is this your signature? Is this your signature? It's like it's so obscure. It's it's just incredible how they, how they can get away with." obscuring the uh their 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 the identi their identifying marks it's supposed to be identifying let's see the rocket man says the arresting officer should put his badge number on the yeah something some kind of a further additional helpful uh uh way to um make this an easier process so we can because um, I don't, I'm not sure if the Third Circuit Court of Appeals saw this document. Uh, it may not have been uh, considered important enough. But, I mean, the Third Circuit Court did have the opportunity to see the police reports. The, the, the police reports, I mean... There was no argument about how there was one police officer who signed twice by just simply rearranging his middle name and last name to look like a completely different person as as the uh, the witness. So there's uh, there's there's a lot that the the uh, Third Circuit Court could have uh, argued. And maybe, you know, my second trial, maybe we could bring that up, saying that this police report is is bogus. The, I mean, it's not even peer-reviewed properly. They have they have the same officer signing in in the as in the official officer and then and then the witness officer just by rearranging his name. <clears throat> Long Island audits trial still going on. I mean, that's for an eighty-dollar ticket. He he owes eighty dollars. That's that's all I've gotten out of it so far. Days and days of of testimony, just over eighty-dollar ticket. All right, this document is not fully complete. 
you you have to go through the bondsman college to learn how how you can uh, recuperate because I'm I'm supposed to know I'm supposed to know this all right I'm the bondsman of my own bond I'm supposed to know how this works oh it's a ninety dollar ticket my my mistake um, um let's see let's sit up Bowsley you lazy bum all right prepaid is unlimited hot spots okay all right so I got uh, that I looked at Owsley's order that I'm supposed to appear on the 17th of February well I'm not I'm not ordered to appear was just we got a pretrial I'm gonna have to ask my lawyer about this pretrial a little bit more um, and I guess one other thing I was just gonna mention is that uh, I I just noticed today that the let me see if I can pull it up yeah it's right there maybe just eh, I could let me just see I just get out of that okay I I just noticed today that those cops from from the the uh, the private the private town property cops they they filed a privacy complaint and that was almost two weeks ago now almost two weeks ago and it's it's interesting so I, I put that in my my uh, what is it the community section and I just kind of pasted it from my email I never whoops community section Esther yeah it was in Esterwood <laughs> oh yeah I also I got my membership too I put the the other um, the other cameras uh, video in to that in, into the the uh, members only section so it's not getting many views but people could use that if they wanted to to make their own video of this I'll tell you the only person I'm, I'm aware of who's made their own made a video about the private town property so far has been Joe cool out of Chicago he does a lot of editing does a lot of editing work and he, he put in a, a clip of mine for, uh, maybe about a he did a lot of cutting which was probably a limited time he, he, he uh, did did about 30 seconds or so from that but uh, yeah that uh, the privacy complaint was filed but nothing has been done nothing's gonna be done uh, because once again it's, it's a it's a police um, encounter entirely there's no privacy I had a I had a little bit of an issue with this this uh, one building that uh, had it had somebody's private address on it I just copied and pasted from the Google Maps and this private properties at this private property address showed up underneath this this uh, building next it's all in the description but they emailed me all right I thought it was gonna be a settled case they emailed me and said I used their private address and and it's it is I guess a female and she's like please change the address to protect my my kids and I'm like all right I, I didn't know I, I thought that the address you know I just copied and pasted that address that the KJ something is a KJ building and oh, what's going on here oh I see okay I'm back on back on the comment stuff okay yeah so they that 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 was changed so in the video video description the video description did kind of have a private address but I, I changed it after I got emailed I did, they didn't need to go through the the YouTube process to tell me to to change you know in the YouTube process it's not it, they never make it clear all right 
unless uh, unless if it's actually in the video um, then they could say that it was from this time to that time and and then I just you know I could look at that and decide what to do but if it's in the description box which I guess I put somebody's private address um, that's not going to be clear they never explain that and through the YouTube complaint process so I don't uh, I but I was emailed and maybe that was the the female the female that complained to me it was about two almost two weeks ago maybe she not only emailed me but went through the the YouTube complaint process too as well so um, maybe in the YouTube complaint process when she said that it's it's in the description he's he wrote my my personal address in the description maybe that's when the YouTube complaint process said well you can also email him because she I mean she got my email you can email him and let him know that that's a concern because um, yeah maybe I don't know I never really gotten emailed like that before so that process is taken care of it's just a surprise windows okay so I don't know what else to say about this situation. Joe Chelsea, you got anything to say? Uh, you're going to jail, buddy. You're going to sit and rot for a long time. We're coming up with new charges. New. We're going to we're going to file them all and you, we're going to just we're going to I'm going to contempt you until for life. If contempt is could be done for life, you're going to be the you're going to be one to to s sit in jail for for life for contempt. So, um, yeah, I have to do more research on this. I, I don't, I mean, I, I, I mean, the best, the best way to go about it is, is to just go to the city and start asking for my, my bond back. And, and, you know, cause it's, it's, I could email the, the police. All right. Maybe, maybe eat, try, I mean, they never respond. They got their non-emergency phone line. I guess I could try to call and ask them about the bonds. I haven't asked anybody. I, I, I would, I would ask, um, on their Facebook. I've, I mean, I, I like to talk on Facebook, but, um, that they, they've, they've cut that off. But yeah, maybe maybe the next step is I should email at least. I don't really I can't call. So the two main things to, to start asking about this bond. But I, I'm thinking that I'm uh, I, I have to go because I paid you know somebody paid in cash for me, and then you know it's like I have to go and and pick up this cash. It's probably not in cash anymore. It's probably uh, more like. Uh, like a, a a check card like they they give you in jail they give you a check card so uh, I guess I got to think about this and how this I got to ask questions about how this works this is a discovery process so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here and in, in just a